In this problem, we consider this shaft with diameter equal to 200 millimeters, which is subjected to a torque T equal to 126 kN meter and a bending moment M equal to 157 kN meter, as you can see here in the picture below. And using more circle, we need to determine where are the principal stresses and the maximum shear force at here point A. And we need also to estimate the orientation of the plane at which they occur. So first of all, we need to determine what are the stresses due to this torque and this moment. Then according to the reference system that we have defined here, we have that at A, this is my small differential element. So we have here normal stresses, sigma y and sigma x, and shear stress tau xy. Then we have normal stresses, sigma x due to bending, right? So this bending moment is creating a shear stress in the x direction. So this is equal to m times y divided by the moment of inertia. And we know that for a cylinder with this circular cross section, the moment of inertia with respect to the neutral axis is equal to pi d to the power of 4, this is diameter, divided by 64. Then this is equal to and y is the distance from the neutral axis to this point. And this is equal to the diameter divided by 2. And of course we know that the moment is equal to 157 kilonewtons meter, then with this information we have that sigma x is equal to 200 megapascals. We know that we don't have sigma y because the torsion is not creating any moment in the y direction, so sigma y equal to zero. Then these are the stresses uh, due to bending. And now we can calculate the stresses due to torsion. This torque T is only creating shear stresses. Then we have the tau xy is equal to the torque times r divided by the polar moment of inertia. And the polar moment of inertia is equal to 2 times the moment of inertia i. Then we know the radius is the halves, so then this is equal to then now we have all the information that we need in order to draw the Mohr circle remember that we have the sigma x is equal to 200 megapascals sigma y is equal to 0 and the shear stress is equal to 80 megapascals And we define this to be the plane A and this is the plane B. So then first we can calculate what is the center of the circle, which is equal to sigma average. So this is sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2. Then this is sigma x divided by 2, which is equal to 100 megapascals. And the radius is equal to sigma x minus the average squared plus the shear stress squared and the square root of this so this is equal to 128 megapascals then now we can start drawing the circle the average is located here center around 100 megapascals so first for this plane A I know that the rotation due to the shear stress is counterclockwise, so according to my criteria, to the criteria that we are using, this is a negative shear stress because it's creating a counterclockwise rotation. So this is located somewhere around here and corresponds with sigma x equal to 200 megapascals.
So this is point A. And pl plane B we have, of course, a positive shear stress with correspond with zero. Then this is point B and this is point A. Now we can finish the circle more or less like this. Then this is the first principal plane and this is the second one. So the coordinates of sigma 1 is equal to the average plus the radius and sigma 2 is equal to the average minus the radius. So this is equal to 100 plus 128 so this is 228 and this is equal to 100 minus 128 then this is negative 28 megapascals of course this is the maximum shear stress which is equal to the radius and now we need to define what is the orientation of the planes at which the principal stresses occur so we know that this is our plane A and we also know that the angles in the merge circle are two times the angles in a real problem so this is the orientation of A respect to the principal plane so this is two times V1 okay then I know that 2 times V1 is equal to the arc tangent of this distance here, which is equal to 80, divided by this distance here, which is equal to sigma x 200 minus the average. Then this is equal to 38.6 degrees. And from here, I have the sigma 1, phi 1, sorry. And this angle is equal to 19.3. So counterclockwise from A. And of course, the orientation of this second plane with respect to A is two times phi two which is equal to two times phi one plus 180 degrees so from here we obtain that phi two is equal to 109.3 degrees again counterclockwise from A